Welcome to St. Michael Easter Podcast. My name is Tim Smith, and I will be leading our meditation today. Our theme this Easter is big love. God's holy work is fulfilled in the resurrection of Christ, the defeat of death itself. We have received the gift of new life, and we can use that gift to spread God's big love to those near and far. Joining Christians everywhere during the Easter season, we proclaim with joy, Alleluia, the Lord is risen. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. A reading from Colossians chapter 4, verses 2 through 6. Devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. And pray for us, too, that God may open a door for our message, so that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ, for which I am in chains. Pray that I may proclaim it clearly, as I should. Be wise in the way that you act toward outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. Here ends the reading. The letter to the Colossians was written while Paul was in prison for proclaiming Jesus as the risen Messiah. Epaphras, who was from Colossia and most likely the founder of the church there, visited Paul to share some challenges and difficulties that they faced with following Jesus. So Paul wrote a letter to the Colossian church, a group of people that he had never met, encouraging them to greater faithfulness to the gospel. In our scripture today, Paul ends his letter with final instructions to the Colossians, serving as the crescendo of his letter by focusing on the central mission of Christ and his followers, bringing others to God. He begins with the call to devote ourselves to prayer, and then adds the curious phrase, being watchful and thankful. I live in the M streets and take different paths to church through Highland Park. It reminds me of the beautiful homes and neighborhood where I grew up and often rode my bike as a kid in Kansas City. A few weeks ago, I was on one of my favorite routes to church and I noticed a home that I had never seen before. I wondered how I could have traveled this familiar path so often and yet not seen it. And then I began to wonder how often that's true in other parts of our lives. The people around us who are far from God and their needs that we fail to see. And then there's the call to thankfulness, which I believe speaks to the mission of Jesus that has been entrusted to us. We have been invited to participate in God's plan of salvation by being both salt and light to the people around us. Paul then asks for prayer for himself, reminding us that the mission of reaching people for Jesus always starts first on our knees in prayer. As he writes this letter from his cell, bound in chains, one has to wonder that when he asked for an open door, if he was not looking at the jail cell door imprisoning him and preventing him from sharing the gospel and bringing others to Jesus. He then says, Be wise in the way that you act toward outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned, with salt. Lee Strobel tells the story of Cody Huff, a convicted burglar, drug dealer, and counterfeiter. He was a meth and heroin addict and was homeless, living in the dirt on the streets of Las Vegas. At night, he would climb into dumpsters behind pizzerias to dig around looking for scraps of crust that he could eat. He was literally starving to death and was down to skin and bones, using only a rope to hold up his pants. His beard and his hair were matted, and his teeth were rotting. He hadn't had a shower for months. In fact, he smelled so terrible that even other homeless people told him, Cody, you stink. You need a bath. One day, a homeless friend told him that there was a church on the other side of town that offered free showers. Together, they walked that seven miles to get to that church. When they arrived, they were given coffee and donuts as they sat down in the waiting area, waiting their turn. Not long after, a middle-aged woman named Michelle, who was a volunteer for the homeless ministry of that church, saw Cody and made a split-second spiritual decision to take a risk. She walked straight over to Cody and looked him in the eye and said, Sir, you look like you need a hug. 
Cody was aghast. He was filthy and smelly and a mess. He responded, Ma'am, I haven't taken a shower in three months. I smell horrible. Michelle just smiled and said, Well, you don't smell to me. And before he knew it, she reached out and wrapped her arms around Cody and gave him a hug. And then she pulled back and looked him in the eye once again and said, Do you know that Jesus loves you? Cody thought to himself, No, Jesus can't love me. I'm a felon. Jesus can't love me. I'm a drug addict. Jesus can't love me. I'm homeless. Jesus can't love me. I'm a bad man. She looked him in the eye again as if she had been reading his thoughts and said, Jesus loves you. That simple gesture changed Cody's life, who said, The time when I was the least lovable, when everyone shunned me, when there was no hope of getting out of the mess that my life was in, when I smelled so bad that even other homeless people didn't want to be around me, there she was with the simple expression of the grace of God. Something happened in my heart that day. Oh, it was a hug, but it was much more than that. That hug said to me, I accept you. I care about you. You matter to me. You have worth and value. You have dignity as a human being. It was the first time in a so long that anyone cared if I lived or if I died, myself included. And then he snapped his finger and said, in that moment, that hug changed everything. Michelle made the most of that spiritual opportunity that day. She took a risk, extending a simple gesture of love and sharing a word of grace, and it changed Cody Huff's life. Today, Cody is an ordained minister in the city of Las Vegas, leading a ministry to the homelessness on the streets where he lived. He's now married and sits on the mayor's task force on homelessness. And so the question for us today is, how can we be alert this coming week to opportunities to express the grace of God with a simple gesture and kind, loving words? We can be alert for the elderly widow down the block who is lonely and just needs someone to talk to. Or the single mom who's got two kids working two jobs and is barely surviving. What if we offered to babysit her kids just to give her some time for herself? Or the kid down the block who's got a basketball hoop in the driveway and yet no friends. We can offer to shoot baskets with him for a while. By making the most of every opportunity, we can offer a kind gesture seasoned with words of grace and blessing and grounded in the love of Christ. We will have the opportunity to be the very presence of Jesus in a hurting world. Amen. Please join me as we continue with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. O God, whose Son Jesus is the Good Shepherd of your people, grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. <laughs>